and thank you, Nick, uh, for an excellent uh, and entertaining lecture. Um, I have to admit, um, unfortunately, this, this is policy and Waterstones. I picked up my uh, Wellington Home Market Harbour uh, branch of Waterstones, and it said two for the price of one, not four pounds. So maybe it's slightly more elevated. But it's, it, they seem to have uh, caught on to that. Um, most unfairly, myself and Nick go back uh, a, a very long way, and I can remember. Uh, conversations in the store, in the pharmacy stores in St. Thomas's, putting the world of pharmacy to rights, just the two of us, uh, a few years ago. Um, now, um, yeah, I enjoyed the Victorian pharmacy series very much indeed. Uh, and I think one of the key element that struck me about the Victorian pharmacies was the way that the, the pharmacists were innovating new services and new, new products and new services to deliver directly to the community. They listened to what the community wanted and they delivered it. We've probably um, moved in, in more recent years, moved away from it, from innovation and, and looking closely at what we can offer as an, uh, to our local communities, what services we can offer. I think there's going to be a renaissance in that. I think we're being asked by government, we've reorganised ourselves to deliver what we broadly term as, as clinical services, but it's precisely what the Victorians were doing, services uh, that people wanted for the benefit of uh, uh, an improvement of their health. And I think we're moving back into that. What I also think, uh, what I like to think, is that schools of pharmacy, perhaps unlike the, uh, the, the Victorian pharmacy, uh, are going to be at the heart of that process. We, um, are very sophisticated all, all organisations now uh, encompassing um, many branches of the practice of pharmacy from industrial to community pharmacy, uh, hospital pharmacy and clinical pharmacy and I think we've, we've got a lot to offer in that, in that movement of, uh, and that evolution of pharmacy. Um, now you can see, uh, if I just turn this off, which is what I'll do now. Um, behind me here is a diagram, which um, a, a rather busy diagram, which I won't go through in, in detail, but it, it summarises uh, the, our school of pharmacy approach uh, to engaging uh, with practice. Uh, we call it the INSPIRE programme. Some of you would have heard about that from uh, Josie... Um, earlier this, uh, today in, when we, in the LPF meeting. And uh, this um, illustrates a way by which the School of Pharmacy down here uh, provides the resources for integrating education, practice and research into, local, into, and in, in, into the local community, um, into both hospital and community pharmacy, and support these branches of pharmacy uh, and medical practice, ultimately influence medical practice. So I'm not going to describe that, but we do have a very vibrant programme planned for uh, supporting the local community. And all this um, fits very well with the central role the School of Pharmacy are, are, are taking in terms of the local practice forum developments. Uh, we have um, the, the chair... Uh, is, is, uh, is a, a member of our staff. I'm taking the education lead. Uh, Peter Rivers is taking the research lead. We're going to be holding mi meetings here. So the local practice forum is very much part of the activity of the School of Phar Pharmacy. We see it as a partnership, and this LPF is, is certainly seen uh, by the professional body as one of, of the leading, uh, what's the word they use early, fast-track LPFs. Um, now, what I'd like to do now is just spend a few uh, minutes uh, just saying a few words about the Leicester School of Pharmacy uh, with, the, with an emphasis on perhaps its future uh, and present and future relationship with, Les with, with Leicester in general. I've been here, as Bill says, since 2003, and I've seen a lot of development both in the School of Pharmacy uh, and in the faculty. Our Dean Barry Mitchell is, is here today. And... The, the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences is a truly multi-professional faculty in which we integrate with, our, all the, with our ally, other allied health sciences, uh, nursing, 
Um, so and, and the social care uh, side as, as well. Um, so it's a very, very uh, invigorating to have a, a, a multi-professional faculty. And the school has grown um, not only in terms of its um, the breadth of what we do, uh, but also in terms of our uh, engagement with the trusts and uh, also with, the, with primary care and the local community. Um, a lot of the uh, strength and stability of our school has always and still does rely upon the local intake of students that we have. And, mo and many of these students come into our pharmacy from, from, from Leicester and Leicestershire and then stay in Leicester and practice in Leicester. And I think this is going to be uh, an important strength for the school because... The, the other aspect of Leicester, which is very interesting, is that it's one of the places in the country which seems to have the highest proportion of independent pharmacies, Victorian style pharmacies, if you like. We've got a strong heritage there. And I think that's going to continue for some time. Yes, the multiples and others are there. And yes, there is this, this decline, perhaps, nationally in, in, in independence. But I think uh, in Leicestershire and in, in, in East Midlands, we're going to see um, these, these smaller groups of pharmacies working together more and I think that that tradition is going to be maintained. And we've been working with these independent pharmacies quite a, a bit o in, the, in the last few years to um, give our students some extra uh, uh, a more structured placement experience so they can go out into the community um, and uh, as part of their undergraduate curriculum. I'll say more about this in a minute. And we've also uh, been working a lot more in recent years with the trusts so that the students can gain clini clinical experience as part of their undergraduate curriculum. It's limited at the moment, the amount of experience they have and time they have on, on the wards, but that's increased over years and we've certainly greatly increased our teacher practitioner base. So we've got a lot more, a lot of teacher practitioners working both in the hospital uh, and in the School of Pharmacy. And, of course, I have to say, in recent years, we've been responsible for the pre-registration uh, programme, uh, which Amanda Kemp has been, been running very successfully now for the whole region, uh, right up to Lincoln. Um, and this also, this, this, this um, responsibility that, for pre-registration year is seen as a leading uh, type of innovation uh, by the professional body, by the regulator, and something that, that may well... Uh, be, be part of an own farm programme in, in years to come. I'll talk about that in a minute. Because this aspect of student placement in practice is one about which I feel very strongly. In order to overcome these barriers to offering services, to offering clinical services, to the, the thing we were discussing about our relationship with, with general practitioners and other health professionals, the one thing that we don't have at the moment in pharmacy is this opportunity for our undergraduates to spend considerable periods of time with their colleagues, as the nurses do, as the medics do. Medics spend time with nurses, nurses spend time with medics. At least if they don't, they all have their issues with each other, they understand where each one is coming from. I'm very committed to professional education, as is my wife, that's a family business. Um, but... I feel to make a big difference to our graduates and prepare them for this role in the future, the placement, getting our students out there in practice as part of the M Farm experience is definitely the way forward. Um, and as some of you know, the M Farm is going to be changing quite dramatically over the next few years, um, perhaps with the pre registration year being integrated in various forms into the M Farm. So, this partnership. With, that we are developing with mo many of you, the practitioners in the trusts and in community, is going to be crucial to future development. So I hope we, we take that message away. Now also, uh, our postgraduate programmes have been greatly enhanced our, over the last eight years. Um, the popular uh, clinical pharmacy distance learning programmes, these have all been uh, updated and, and in, uh, changed over, over in recent years so to provide more flexible and relevant modules 
and incorporate within them a distance learning, uh, uh, sorry, independent prescribing. And there's been a lot of international interest, in fact, in those programs, and it's something I'm going to encourage in future years, and also encourage uh, pharmacists locally to uh, take some professional doctorates uh, with our school. Recent uh, exciting development has been our uh, taking over of the MSc in clinical pharmacy from the University of Derby. We uh, had our first uh, induction of students uh, just, just this week. And um, this was under the Strategic Health Authority Learning Beyond Registration program. And it effectively means that we're now responsible for postgraduate hospital training for the whole region uh, right up uh, to Lincoln. Uh, and I think that's an important move uh, for the School of Pharmacy. And what we're now working on is a new program built upon uh, what is known as the Joint Program Board Model that's uh, been running for some time in the south of the country and becoming uh, a sort of a standard model of delivery of postgraduate education. We hope to deliver a, a new course, uh, replacing the Derby programme as it has been, from next September 2011, and also to start working with our colleagues in the West Midlands to form a joint programme board across the whole Midlands. We hope to be central, perhaps leading part of that initiative. Um, our postgraduate programmes are also expanding in other areas of pharmacy with biotechnology and pharmaceutical quality uh, by design. If I'm going to show you a little um, uh, walkthrough now, if I just um, get that working. Is it frozen? Somebody can help me unfreeze the computer. Uh, <laughs> We've, um, we're building a new um, state-of-the-art um, facility, which is a, a good manufacturing process facility. Let's try. That's it. Now that should... Oh, no. It's come and gone. He wants to go back to Nick's book, obviously. Is it, is it going to go? It's not going to move. Okay. I, no. It's, oh, there we are. Oh, there's, there are. It works. Uh, so this is our new GMP facility, um, and it's for uh, building... That's the roof of it, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> um, you should, should start somewhere, yeah I suppose you do. Oh, you're, going, you're going to go in through the door. I'll talk while that's moving, that, that virtual tour of the facility. Uh, and basically it's a mock-up, yes, of a, man, of a manufacturing unit, a proper pharmaceutical manufacturing unit. And... Uh, this is going to be used by undergraduates, obviously, but also, probably even more so, postgraduates taking our new MSc in pharmaceutical technology, and also to provide short courses in training manufacturing, um, pharmaceutical manufacturing to, the, to industry. So it's a, a very important development. The university has funded the building of this site, and these things are extremely expensive uh, to, to build, and we're actually looking now for external funding for the specialist equipment that we're going to need uh, to run the programmes. Uh, finally, our, our research effort uh, has also very much reflects the uh, partnership that we have with uh, local NSA, NHS organisations and the pharmaceutical industry. Um, many of our projects in pharmaceutical technology have been supported by industry and regional funding from organisations like EMDA. Um, for instance, the uh, groundbreaking work on insulin uh, delivery uh, for diabetics that's, also, that's recently been in, in the papers but, uh, and, and I think believe on television as well uh, from, from Joan Teller. This was also all local initiatives that are now building into a national programme. Um, the other, other examples, we're working with the University Hospitals of Leicester uh, to look at taking small blood samples from children, from neonates, uh, for kinetic drug analysis. So that's another piece of innovative work we're working on. So I'll, I'll wind up. Uh, I think the next 100 years, then, is going to see a very strong role for our school, based far more on, on direct contact with all levels of practice in Leicester and across the region. And for myself, I look forward, although we were talking about this just before, to, to Nick, for at least the first decade uh, of that 
um, development. So that, that gives a clue to how old I might be. Uh, so at least the, the first decade of these, I, and I think that we're going to see some big changes. Thank you very much.